geography. Uh, it's so thick because I've lived a long life. It's called checking my roots, and I went back to Europe to check uh, my, my genealogy, my heritage, uh, and my religious heritage as well. And I had just finished the publication of this book, and I thought, okay, I'm done with life. So what else could there be? You know, I've, I've fulfilled what I believe God would have in my life. Um, so I'm done. I had just finished with a seven-week book promotional tour, and I stopped off uh, on my way home to visit a friend who is a Presbyterian and a, a fellow author, and um, I got a shock. She told me that she had converted to Catholicism. And I said, you must be kidding. I thought, she has reverted into some heresy. How could she possibly? Seminary trained and, and solid as she could be as far as Calvinistic thought, Reformed thought, and she had converted to be a Catholic. Well, I thought, um, I, I think I wasn't very charitable to her. Uh, I, I was quite critical, quite judgmental, and I apologize for that. Um, however, I said, I, I, I'm going to rescue you. I don't know anything about Catholics, but I'm going to study directly. I don't want, don't want hearsay. I really admit that I don't know that much. Uh, but I can't believe that you believe what you believe. So I will study. I had this going for me. I was honest about it. And, uh, I, but I was only studying Catholicism in order to refute her position and to rescue her from this terrible position. That's what started me on my journey. I was reading the little summary you made, and you had it. We don't have time to reproduce it here, but you had put a list of all the things you couldn't believe that she had to buy into. If she, and the list was an arm long. And I thought it was the greatest collection I've ever seen of all those misunderstandings, misunderstandings. of the church. Misunderstandings. Yeah. Uh, it was total misinformation, misconception. That you presumed you, from your background. I presumed. It was true. But then you set out, to, okay, I'm going to check every one of those. I'm going to check them all. Be true or not. Check them all with my mind. To, so I had to figure them all out. Uh, and at that point, I went into two closets. Um, the, the closet of prayer. I was honest about this. I, I, I wanted to know, God, don't lead me astray. Let, let me know the truth. And you know, a, a prayer like that, God will always answer. The other closet I went into was study. I became a bookworm and a tapeworm. And of course, I went the Scott Hahn route. Um, and I discovered EWTN. I uh, never heard of it before, just cruising the, the, with my monitor. Uh, and I think if it were not for each of your ministry and everything that you do. Uh, I had to sort of do it all underground yeah. because of my position and, and my reputation. So um, that's when I came upon the Coming Home Network. And uh, eventually I got uh, bold enough to attend your conference in Ohio, yeah. uh, especially the one a couple of years ago on um, early church on fathers. Early church, yeah. And uh, that's where I, I met one of the speakers, Rod Bennett, and I had already devoured his book on the four witnesses. I'd learned all about. Great book. I had yeah. not heard about the early church fathers. In my Christian education, everything began with the Reformation. Before that, nothing mattered. Martin Luther and John Calvin brought the faith back to where it should have been. So um, I discovered the Coming Home Network, and I discovered uh, Mr. Bennett, <laughs> and we became friends. And he volunteered to be uh, one of my theological mentors. And I, uh, I appreciate uh, all the struggle that he went through trying to answer my questions. Then I asked Coming Home Network for a lady mentor. And I was uh, uh, given Dr. Robin Moss, yeah. who was in, in my area. Yeah, she's been and on the she's program. been, uh, sure. she's been, she was my, my uh, more or less spiritual mentor. Now, the interesting about this thing is, we did all of our mentor, they did all of the mentoring of me, all by email. Um, I never met Dr. Moss until she came 
months and months later to my confirmation. I gave them both a really hard time, both Rod Bennett and, and uh, yeah. Dr. Moss, because uh, I insisted on taking every single dogma and doctrine in order to compare it with the scriptures, uh, to figure it all out, compare, do, do, do my own mental comparison. Uh, but finally I came to the point where there was truth. Every question I had had, a, had, a, had an answer, a historical, theological, biblical answer. Um, and I got brave enough to enroll in the RCIA course. I could have taken a shortcut um, and found a priest and just kind of did, did a, a short course. But I decided I'm going to go the whole nine yards. And so I was the oldest one in the class, and I went all nine months. And all the rest of my questions uh, were answered according to, uh, to my satisfaction. However, I had to stop looking through Protestant eyes. I had to stop leaning on my own understanding and take the step of faith. But I, 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 I was really afraid. There, there were things that... That, that scared me, because how about my reputation? Right. How about my position in the evangelical world? How about my relationships? Not only my relationships with my family, none of, none of whom were Catholic. Would it, would it shake their faith to see me make such a change in my faith context? Uh, you expressed there, so there were many treasures. Of, there were treasures. You've expressed so many of your own strong views in your books. I mean, you're in print. I, I, I'm in print. And um, I was a, a speaker in, in evangelical circles. And what it, it, it was a frightening thing. Yeah. Uh, I think sometimes uh, Catholics don't realize what a trauma it is for an evangelical to become a Catholic. So I had to weigh all these things. My age entered into that. <laughs> Those of my age level or, or, or younger, um, we're set in our ways. Uh, we, we have our habits. We, we have our traditions. We, we have our circle of people. Um, we have our reputation. All of these things I was fearful of. I, I was fearful that probably I would be blacklisted as a speaker. And, and I was speaking quite widely. Uh, and my books uh, would, would uh, probably also be blacklisted. Yeah, they're dust in a warehouse somewhere. Dust in a warehouse, absolutely. So um, all of these things were quite frightening. And they're, they're, all, they're all biggies as far as uh, looking back on, on your own reputation is concerned. You know, I know you mentioned that you looked at every doctrine and uh, Maybe we get some questions about that. If you look back, maybe for those listening, um, was there a particular doctrine? <coughs> excuse me. It's that time of year. A particular doctrine that you really had to work with, that you know opened your eyes, that became the big one that brought you home. I think it was the communion of saints. Actually, <coughs> uh, that was something so new to me, uh, and yet once I understood what that was all about. Uh, and saw the biblical base for it all, um, I really took that and ran down the field with it because it opened up a whole new set of families for me. Uh, the families of the, of the, of the saints, uh, saints on earth, uh, the, the live ones, my, my Catholic friends. Uh, I wasn't really sure as in my growing years that, that they were saved and uh, uh, on the way to heaven. Uh, but here was the whole new Catholic world for me. Uh, and then the world of, of the family of, of the saints in heaven. Uh, all the names of the, I never heard of most of them. And they have become my friends and those for to whose intercession I look as, as well. And then there were the angels. Uh, and then there were my own uh, relatives. Uh, who were evangelicals, who were Christians, and, and perhaps way back in, in my genealogy, uh, they're all part of my family. Yeah. So the communion of saints was something that, that was very, very special to me. All right. We're going to take a break. Marcus, I'm, I'm a pastor here in the Bronx, New York City. Wonderful. 
Yeah, born and raised in the Catholic Church. I, I met Christ at the age of 14. I've been serving as a pastor now for about 20 years. My question is, um, in terms of t tradition, that's one thing I'm still struggling with. Yeah. The role of tradition in the Christian life, uh, it's equated to the Word of God as being an equal level. And uh, I wonder how yourself and the guests that you have there have dealt with that teaching of the Church as, as it being equal to the Word. All right, Raymond. Hey, God bless you, and thanks for yes. thanks for your call. God bless you in your own service to Jesus Christ. I had to wrestle through with tradition uh, because this was something that uh, we we just stayed away from. It is the Word of God, and nothing but the Word of God. But then, when you read the Word of God and read what the Apostle Paul talked about tradition, uh, sacred tradition, not not just small t tradition. Traditions come and go, customs, but. The sacred tradition, which is not is not equal to the word. The word of God is is inspired, uh, but as far as the sacred tradition added to that, because it was oral in the beginning, anyway. There, there were there were several centuries before there was any written word, and the, it, it was being written as others were coming into the church. So the church preceded the written word. When I read you, when I read your story, I know one of the verses that that had awakened to you to this power and, and this enormity of Catholic tradition was that statement in the end of John, when he admits that there is so much that so Jesus much said that isn't in here, that that tradition is much bigger than was able to be put in this books. But also, you you also quoted the verse in John, I think it was sixteen, where he promised that the Holy Spirit would help them learn and remember all that even he wasn't able to teach them at that time would bring to their understanding. So we, it's, not, it's not just, and I know Raymond coming f myself from outside the church, that even to say that tradition was equal with, equal with the scriptures just graded against my, my own understanding of my love for scripture, it was like, you know, your, your fingernails on the blackboard to say tradition's equal with scripture. But from scripture, from the early church fathers, we understand that scripture, canonical scripture, is a part of the bigger tradition, God is by the Spirit, oral and written. And maybe the verse for me that had the biggest impact is that verse in 2 Thessalonians 2.15 which is when Paul says, hold to the tradition Traditions. that you received orally and written. Reflect on that. I mean, that is a powerful statement in itself. 